Thank you for to to prepare the performances. Yeah. And uh, maybe, yeah, move the air of this uh, chaotic session. <laughs> going to go quickly because we also did a presentation yesterday. So I'm going to talk for seven minutes and then uh, my colleague Marcello is going to talk for 15 minutes and then I'm going to talk for another five minutes. I hope. So we are a group called Palindrome. It is a dance company, was a dance company, it is a dance company but we don't make performances very much anymore. Instead we're concentrating on developing a device for people with disabilities uh, uh, called uh, so these are some of the ideas we had or roles we might play. Actually, since uh, participating yesterday and today, uh, I have new ideas, which I'm sure was Jaime's intention, uh, which are not listed here. Uh, new ideas which are perhaps bolder and, and more uh, interesting to, to some of you. But the quick ideas are we're developing a device, which I, you can think of as an input device. In other words, we, and I'm speaking of in, in, Infomos and Palindro, we are developing a device that turns movement into music, the motion composer. And this can, this can provide meaningful data on human movement to other researchers and artists and people who are participating. We've made, uh, we have uh, experience uh, making workshops and performances for 30 years, so we have some experience in that. I'm a choreographer and a dancer. And uh, we're doing research on, on uh, uh, the use of uh, our device, for example, with uh, Children's Hospital in September in uh, Italy and Genova, where we'll be working with the hospital with handicapped children uh, to see how music and dance with this technology can, can uh, uh, help them. So we're also, the uh, Palindrome is also the uh, instigators of the initiative within Metabody to include uh, persons with disabilities. So for us, it's important that all of the events of Metabody, as many events as possible, be conceived with the inclusion of persons with disability and, uh, and uh, the people who work with people with disabilities, therapists, and so on. Uh, we're developing a device, as I said, for the last three years. This is what we're, what we're focusing on. There are videos demonstrating the device, since you didn't, some of you may not have seen our demonstration yesterday, go, go to this website and, and there are a number of videos of how we use it with persons with disabilities. A brief description then of the device, it turns, music, it turns movement into music, it's designed for persons with disabilities, anybody can use it of course, but by saying it that way I think we're more likely to uh, make sure that it reaches the people who I believe stand perhaps the most gain. It's a complete solution, it's a box, it contains the computer and the sensors. Our concept is to make it intuitive, easy to operate, this is important to us. It's, it's going to be used by people who are not savvy with computers and sensors. I think it's a, a, a particularly high quality, the, the sensors are better than what you'll find in the Kinect and the other commonly available sensors that, that you find today. Uh, and I think that makes it valuable to us. It's high resolution, and you can see eye movements. Some of the patients we work with only have eye movements, so I mean, it's important. Small gestures can be very important to human beings. And so it was important to us from the beginning that finger movements, mouth movements, eye movements be, be easy to track. Uh, and the other thing that was very important to us was low latency. Um, in, in, uh, in video games, uh, cause and effect is important. You want, you want to be uh, clear that when you shoot the Gave the player that the, that the person you, you killed the player. Uh, in music and dance, uh, it's not so much about causality as uh, synesthesia. Uh, this feeling of music and dance fitting together. Did I make the music? The music make me. If, you, if they're tight enough, if the synchronization is tight enough, uh, uh, you don't ask that question. It isn't. It isn't. Uh, it isn't a question of cause and effect. It's a feeling. It's a music dance feeling. So low latency was very important to us from the beginning. Uh, so I think we have an impressive piece of technology uh, on the way. It, 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 it will have two forms, uh, uh, the uh, closed and open form. 
This refers to the software. In other words, the closed form, uh, you press a button and the environment is active. And you press another button and you have another environment. Uh, the open form means you can open up the software and, and, and change it around. Uh, so, so some of you will be interested in the open form. You may want to use the data generated by the sensors to do something that has nothing to do with our musical environments. So for, for some users, for therapists and so on, it might, it's nice that it's simple, easy to use. But for some of you, you may, you may want to uh, put the sensors to work, and we want to facilitate that as well. Also, I like the idea that perhaps when we finish with a workshop, uh, we can leave the device behind. Uh, I don't know how many devices and how much money we'll have to do that. But it's a great idea that if people get excited about using it, uh, that whatever we do in a workshop, it would be great if we could leave something behind so that the people could continue, continue the, the process after we've left. And this is the, this, the kind of hardware that's usually hardest to get is the sensors. That's the expensive stuff that, that you can't go to the... You, everybody has laptops. There's a lot you can do with software. But it's these sensors that most of you, most of you don't have. So most, most people don't have. So, so that's something we are hoping we can provide. So the history of this uh, device, as I mentioned, the dance company started in 82, and uh, we, we, I began collaborating with an engineer named Peter Weiss uh, in 95, and we developed ICON. This motion tracking became very uh, important to the dance company. I had this idea in 2010 to make a device for people with disabilities, and we got a grant from the German government to develop this idea, and we have been ever since. Very important partner in, our, in the project, the people who were, do, who were, who were uh, uh, in large part financing the development of the device is a company in Germany called IMM. And I have a patent pending, a number of patent pendings on the device. And we hope to have the first prototype available at the end of the year, early next year. And then maybe we'd like to have like five prototypes, something like that, so that we can uh, you know, spread them around and, and <coughs> give, give uh, Give, us, give researchers and artists a chance to use it within this context, within that environment. So Motion Composer is not a, a, a company, it's not a nonprofit, it's nothing. It's the name of, a, it's the name of this device. Uh, it's being developed by Palin uh, with the help of six, six composers, two of whom are in this room, and uh, a human movement specialist, that includes myself and the colleagues at Infomos. Our big subcontractors, IMM, and IMM is subcontracting influence. That's the structure of our collaboration. So the hardware is described here. For those of you who know about these things, the device has no has no uh, screen uh, or buttons of any kind. Rather, you have a tablet controller. That gives you the advantage that you can go in front of the device and, and, and use it, having the control in your hand. For anyone who's ever done motion tracking, you know there's a lot of running back and forth between <laughs> yeah. the computer and the environment. This will kind of save it. Here is a body because it wasn't there before. But what happens if the sun goes behind a cloud? 
See, the, the environment completely changes and the computer is immediately confused. Well, to those of us who have been doing this, it, there's no real problem. We just say, oh, lights change, quick, everybody go away, new background. But we don't want therapists and so on to have to, these things are totally confusing. So what you do instead is use a 3D sensor, depth sensor, and you say, everything farther away than here, erase it. So now when I'm standing here, I'm standing in front of a void, and it's easy to see the contour of the body. So it's a, it's a very technically um, challenging uh, uh, task to synchronize it with this 3D and this high resolution 2D, and to put the features that really need low latency on the 2D side and the feature, features that, you know. But it's worth it. In the end, it's worth it because the device becomes easy to use. It has this, put it on the table, turn it on, and I'm, oh, I'm hearing my body. That's amazing. It's beautiful. That's fun. This, this immediate thing is very important. Uh, this describes the software, to those of you who know what those things mean. Okay, so now I'm for you. Am I getting good time? I'm good, right? I've been 10 or I have 10? That's what I thought. Why don't you take over? And, uh, uh, I didn't want to say one more thing. This is what I want to say. It's my last slide. So I said before, we, we want to provide meaningful data on, hum on human movement. See? So what does that mean? You might think that we want to know like the XYZ coordinates of all the body parts. We want to know where I am in space. But you see, when we use our bodies, those, that's, not all, that's not how we, we think or move. It, we don't need to know where all the body parts it are. It's not really what's important in a lot of cases. In dance, maybe the weight is important, you know, the swing. It, it may sort of have nothing really to do with positions of body parts. So that might not be the best approach. Skeleton extract, extraction is kind of all the rage in, in motion tracking or game system. Um, I'm not that interested in extracting the skeleton of the body. And again, I don't think that's what's interesting to us about our body in motion. Um, gesture recognition and intention recognition and, and these kinds of higher level features, uh, machine learning, interpretation of gesture, these things are of course interesting. And I appreciate very much the, the uh, particular interest of Infomus in this direction. And I, and I think there's a future. But first, we just want to get this kind of the basics, the meat. I'm a meat and potatoes. I'm an American. I, I have a kind of simple, I want this, I want to get this working in a simple way first. So I'm going to, right, so I want to describe my, my simple strategy. But now I want to stop and let my children do. Technical. I mean, that how the bodies understand it and how the body 
uh, connects to the music, but it's something that relates to the um, to the to the feeling of the body. So not something inter intellectually understand it, and it's not just intellectually understood, but it's also how through our physical experience, how do we feel the body, and then how do we feel the music with the body. And um, so for me, um, to analyze um, to analyze um, the motion composer, um, it's very important to use a phenomenological approach because we can consider the real experience, or I mean the direct experience of, of who is actually using these environments and not just an abstraction or an objectivation of what, what they are. And I relate a lot to a um, uh, philosopher and also dancer that's called uh, Susan Kose. She wrote a book called Closer. And uh, her idea is to, that we should get closer to our technology, but uh, also through our body. And um, I quote this sentence that's from her introduction in the book. And um, so she thinks that the body is really a kind of a catalysator, a kind of way to understand the difficult system or um, something that you make it difficult to understand from an intellectual point of view. With a body, something more, something easier. I could talk for days how you should run or how you should uh, swim, but until you don't actually do it, you won't understand it. So, um, and the same, the same concept, concept apply to the to motion composer. So, um, our idea is to take advantage of this point of view. Actually, it's, it's basically a mixture, of course. Of course, there is also some intellectual understanding of the body. And um, what it's also understand is uh, it's the relationship. So, it's not just about, okay, I have a body, I have music, and I move, and I have a one-to-one -one correspondence but uh, uh, the relationship that are created through this uh, experience. And uh, particles, the, for who of you that were here yesterday, um, the, the little demo that we did at the end yesterday, uh, it's called particles. It's uh, an environment where there are a lot of little sounds, and uh, through your movement you, you establish a very complex relationship that it's not based on uh, uh, how your body is built, Say or how you how you stay, but how you move, and so um, the um, yes, so that the um, this, this single the single parts, it's about how these single parts are related, not just the sum of the single parts. And what's the they there are, there are on the x x uh, there are a lot of sounds kind of. 300 sounds and that are also that can also be changed so that can also and uh, through your movement so through your activity you actually play the sound and uh, through your position you decide which sound but being so many little sound and also very short you also have uh, you always have a little changement in your position so you have changement in, uh, in the sound that you're playing even if you are actually staying in the same place because it, it's enough that I move my arm a bit on the right, and then I have other sounds. And um, I mean, this is the basic of the patch. Then there are, for example, some long sounds that can trigger whether with stillness or moving your hands above your head, and, and then um, uh, filter them through, through, through your movement or stop them with, uh, with a gesture like this. So that's. Um, and so they are basically triggered by activity mainly. That it's not, uh, I mean, it's not about how, how is your body, but it's more about okay, how much you're moving, <coughs> how you're moving. And, um, and that creates exactly this mixture of one to one correspondence. So if I really stay here and I move my hands in the same way, probably I will get the same sound. But if I move a bit more, I have some kind of randomness that creates a more rich experience. And that it's, I would say, uh, that has the same quality of a body. That, that means you have some stability, but also some instability in a, in a body. And, um, and that connects also to the, um, I mean, more to, um, 
I mean, I, I relate mainly to two other philosophers for, uh, for this research. One is uh, Deleuze, and uh, Deleuze um, um, uh, research a lot about um, relationships and uh, creating an organ and using a, a body as a, uh, an alternative concept for uh, identity, so a more open concept of identity. So something that is create always uh, an exchange and something that is becoming, not something that is uh, stable. And, uh, and then what is also happening in this kind of interaction through movement and music. So we have a relationship and uh, all the movement and the music are already two different bodies that are kind of communi communicating. And uh, the other philosopher that I uh, connect a lot is uh, Melo Poutin, and he's um, quite famous for this idea of uh, per uh, perception loop that you especially notice, for example, when you touch your hand, so which hand is touching the other hand. And, um, and so you have a, a perception loop between yourself. And uh, in our case, I, um, I use the same concept of Melo Ponti, but the perception loop is now between your body and the music. <coughs> so from one side, I, uh, I can perceive my body when I move, because if I taste it, nothing happens, I mean, in some patches. And if I move, I have some music. So I can, I can understand, okay, now I'm standing still, now I'm moving my body. And it's, it, is, it is in my direction. And then I also have the other direction, so depending on the sounds that I can trigger or that, that, that change, I also move my body in different ways. And, uh, and this creates um, exactly what I call a perceptual loop between music and movement, so it's kind of a perception of music, so a kind of synesthesia. Um, back to the... Uh, so our main goal is to build this, this box is machine for people with disabilities. We are doing already workshops in, the, in, the, in this field. And um, of course, I mean, it's also for dancers. I mean, the same patch, everyone can, can play them. And it's exactly the, um, the advantage of this system so that uh, the disabled body is not something less able, but it's uh, exactly like everybody. It's more about. So it's not like a classical instrument where your body has to be, I mean, you need hands, you need fingers to play a guitar. And so it's more about deeper perception and personal experience. So our, physical, our qualities that, um, that you have to develop through experience, so independent of, your, of how your body is built. Of. <coughs> and um, so, exactly, so uh, this is openness of most moves to every kind of body that can perform in this uh, the, the environment. And so mm, in, in this meaning, I mean, it's about um, most moves is a lot about perception. So the quality that actually you, um, you enhance through the experience of this musical environment is actually your perception. And uh, for, the, for the, this reason, I, I, I think that most 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 composer is actually about performing perception. Uh, another philosopher, Alpha Noem, quite I mean the last, um, quite recent. I mean he already um, studied perception as a way of acting, so not some, as something passive that our brain just receives, but something really embodied that we experience through acting. So through something really uh, not, not, not passive at all. And, um, and when I read him, I immediately think, uh, was thinking about motion composer because um, perception is something really active. It's something that you uh, experience in the patch and you feel kind of, you, you have the feeling of your body in the music and back that to your movement. And um, so for me, motion composer is uh, Basically, um, um, a validation of Alban Noem's the theory, especially his book. Uh, 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 um, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, exactly. So that's. I'm finished. Uh, 
Um, so then, so yeah, that's my um, all this just to just to say, just to understand that um, what we actually perform in this environment is basically perception. I was thinking, do we perform technology? Maybe yes. Also, I think, of course there is technology in between, and there is also the body that is like, can be also understand and understood as a kind of technology. But actually, this added value that remains between the, the body, the movement that we have in the body, and the result, the musical result, and then what we get back to the music and this um, musical understanding, it's perception. So you're actually performing your perception. So how much can you feel the music? How much can you feel your body? Um, as a last example, to close my presentation, we did a workshop in Vilno, in Czech Republic, and I was quite impressed about uh, that group of disabled people, because they had already some dance experience, that is something quite uncommon for people with disabilities, unfortunately. And, um, and they really got into these environments really easily, and really, they had already that feeling, so that really, um, that's uh, another confirmation of this uh, perception um, value of, of, uh, of the environment, because they, we, we didn't have to explain much, just show a bit, and they already knew, because they, they, they had a good understanding, a good consciousness of, of their body, as a dancer usually has. So that's uh, exactly. Robert, we'll stay here. Please, yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> um, apropos uh, yes. Bruno, this uh, workshop, this, this group was quite interesting. In fact, I'd like to uh, try to get them involved and maybe we can do something there mm -hmm. as part of MetaBody. Yeah. They have, for example, the philosophy, or at least a lot of the dancing they did for people in wheelchairs uh, was without the wheelchair. Um, you know, so you you end up on the floor. Uh, some people in wheelchair can can, can even walk, but but uh, many are, in, are are using their bodies on the floor as modern dancers do. You know, they're crawling and using arm things and using the parts of the legs they have, and um, and this uh, made us realize one of the things we're one of the attracting. Uh, mappings that we're using is uh, level. I mean, we have a continuous 